What's your name? Adil Zubair. You don't have to make it sound like Master Mary. Uh, is that how you don't introduce yourself? Adil Zubair. <laughs> <laughs> no, my name is Adil Zubair. And um, what do you do? Uh, I'm a student. I've just finished a mechanical engineering degree and just moving on to an acting degree. Ooh, okay. Yeah. And how do you reply to the question, where do you come from? If someone says where I'm from, I say England. But when they say where do you come from, I automatically assume they're referring to my heritage. So then I say India. What is your friendship group like? My friendship group is very mixed. I have people from, um, and I think that's partly because of going to university. Before university, I just had a lot of English friends. And then when I got to university, because I had people from different countries, so my group became really mixed into people from India, uh, people from other countries in Europe, and still having English friends. What's your favorite sport? Um, to do dance. Dance is my favorite sport because I don't really play other sports. That's why I would definitely say dance. To watch, I like watching cricket. Yeah. What's your favorite song? Okay, uh, so it's from a film called I. It's a Hindi song. And uh, it's called Tu Chale. Uh, it's sung by Arijit Singh and Shreya Ghoshal, music by A.R. Rahman. And it's a love song. And uh, it's just really nice because Arijit Singh, he sings it really differently to his normal voice. And I love the video as well. So, yeah. What do you think of the British Asian music scene? I think, I think it's getting better. It's getting a lot better and more... I listen to it more now than I did before. Before I only kind of knew of Jay Sean as being the British Asian music scene. And, uh, and I thought it was very uh, kind of repetitive. But now... Um, I think there's a lot more artists, and uh, I'm I'm more I'm listening to a lot more of it now. Leading on from that, I guess, who's your favourite British Asian artist? In you know who you've called, who are you listening to the most? Uh, I listen to Arjun a bit now because uh, I saw him perform live at a dance show. Uh, I didn't know he was going to be there, but then once you see him live, I was like, okay, let me check him out. Um, Jay Sean, because that's like childhood, um, and a bit of Zack Knight as well, yeah. And um, this is fully your question. <laughs> Let's go. What do you think of Bollywood music? So this is one part where, f like, when people say Bollywood music, for me it's just music, because I've grown up listening to Bollywood music, so I just love it. So to me, that's music. Because until very recently, I didn't listen to other, other types of music at all. And that, that came from my, my dad. Because when you're young, you don't really get to have a say of what music is on in the house. So when I was three or four, that's what would be playing in the house. And then I kind of just took it from that and started listening to my own Bollywood music. So I love Bollywood music, yeah. Do you listen to BBC Asian Network and um, what do you think of it? I do listen to BBC Asian Network and uh, I really enjoy BBC Asian Network because it, it does quite often strike the balance of the British side of our lives, the Asian side of our lives. Um, so you get to listen to Asian music, uh, but then the way they're talking on the show, the kind of anecdotes, the stories they'll have, will, will have a British twist to it as well, which is how I grew up listening to Asian music, but living a different, not, not like a strict Asian life. Yeah. Is there any such thing as a specific British Asian sound? <sighs> no, there can't be a specific British Asian sound because I think to everyone else, British Asian is a different thing. So I think there, I think there will be a certain thing which will make something British Asian. Uh, which might be the instruments, they might have a certain instrument which is not used in all British music, but you don't have to have, for, what I'm thinking of is for example a sitar. So I'm not saying a song has to have a sitar in it to be British Asian, but it might have it, whereas an English song might never have a sitar. So there might be certain things which make it like identifiably British Asian before I've even heard the full song, 
but otherwise no. So what about the difference between British Asian then and Hindi music? Do you think there's a difference in like Bollywood or Indian general pop? Um, I think that between Bollywood pop and British Asian music, like the pop, it's the difference is getting less and less every day. If you compare our classical Indian music, then that will always be different because that started in a certain place with a certain instrument, with a certain sound. Um, and I think British Asian is all about fusing, fusing sounds, the music scene at least. Um, so bet and Bollywood pop is also now a lot more of a fusion sound. So I think the difference between those two is getting less and less, maybe just the language. Film! Yay! <laughs> well, you really My time to shine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what's your favourite film? So I have two favourite films. Uh, my favourite English film is The Pursuit of Happiness. And my favourite Hindi film is a film called Anand. And they're both really uh, inspiring films. Um, and they're about how, even through adversity, you can find the good things about life and also to keep going. So uh, just to briefly sum them up, Anand is about a guy who has a terminal illness and the film, the film starts at you know he's dead. Then it goes into a flashback about how even though he knew he was going to die, he lived his life to the fullest. And The Pursuit of Happiness is about um, a guy who nothing is going right for him. He loses his, uh, he's not losing his job, but he doesn't really have a steady job. Uh, his wife and him separate. He has a young kid to look after, but despite all that, he keeps going. So they really inspire me, and uh, whenever I'm feeling down, I can always watch one of the two and just like find energy to keep going. Have you seen Four Lions, Bend It Like Beckham, or East Is East? All three of them. I've seen all three of them. Yeah. And could you relate to them? Um, so I could relate to them in a way that I knew people like the characters in the film. So I didn't, I didn't necessarily feel I'm exactly like that myself, but I'm like, I know someone like that. Uh, so for sure, I could relate to them, yeah. We've kind of already touched this anyway, but like, what do you think of Bollywood? <laughs> Again, for Bollywood for me is like films. So someone would uh, say, you know, oh, you're going to watch a Bollywood film. And I'm like, I'm just going to watch a film because I've just grown up on that stuff. Um, I always say to people, you know, I had a healthy diet of two to three Bollywood films a week. And as I've gotten older, it's become like one a week, but uh, yeah, I love Bollywood. And um, are there any films around now that you like and you can relate to? Um, so it's not too recent. It came out last year. It's a Bollywood film called Kapoor and Sons. And um, it was about like a dysfunctional family. And it really makes you think about the small things in life that we often don't pay attention to. Like we might be waiting for like a big party or a birthday and we're like, oh, that'd be a good day. But actually in a normal day, there's so many like small things which can make you happy. So, um, and because we all have in a way, no family is perfect. You all have little things that you fight about. So I really like that film because um, it picked up on the small things in life. Yeah. Each person finds their own thing when they're watching a film because I was reading this somewhere and I think it's so true. You see yourself in the story. So we might both be watching the same film, but our experience might be completely different because you'll pick up on a different aspect because you're like, you know what, that has happened to me and I'll pick up on a completely different aspect. So with Kapoor and Sons, uh, after seeing it, I straight away messaged my cousins because I don't speak to them that much. Not like, oh, I don't speak to them, but you know, you, everyone's get caught, caught up in their own lives. The first thing I did was message them, just be like, hey, how are you, what's up? Because that film, to me, you know, because the brothers kind of had drifted, then they got closer. Whereas for someone else, they might have picked up on the death aspect if they've had a recent passing. So that's why I love films, because I feel everyone can, yeah. I could talk for hours about films, I love films. And how often do you see something either in literature or in the news or, you know, in the general media yeah. um, that you think represents you? Um, not often enough. I feel, I feel because I believe like British Asian is a very unique kind of niche, I feel. And I feel you get news representing Asians, you get news representing British, but you don't get like the middle ground where I feel is where, if you said me, I'd say that's where I'd fall. 
So I'd say perhaps not as often as I'd like to. What was the last wedding that you went to like? The last wedding? Hmm, that was, it was a while ago now, about five years. Um, and so we knew the bride. She was a family friend and we've known her for a long time. And she, uh, it's a nice story because she, she is uh, like um, Indian origin. And then uh, her husband is British. So it's really nice because they had two ceremonies, one which was more in an Indian style, one which was more in an English style. And uh, hopefully they won't watch this because when it was the Indian one, he looked really funny and like, like comedy funny, like cute though, because bless him, because he wasn't too sure what to wear and the Indian clothes he chose didn't really look that great on him. But, uh, but it was still very sweet. So what's your favorite food? Uh, butter chicken. And Gonna what's keep your real. mom's favorite thing to cook? Uh, that I don't know. I know what I like of hers the most, which is her dal and her roti, which is really stereotypical now that I think about it. But um, I eat her roti less now because basically, now I've been in uni, I get up at different times. So usually what would happen is we'd all have breakfast together because I'm going to school at a set time and she'd always make roti for all of us. And now sometimes if I have a lecture at 10, I don't get up at that time. Um, so she'll, she'll have left. So now when I get her roti, it's like a big deal for me now. And uh, I love her roti and her dal, yeah. Do you identify as British Asian and why? I 100% identify as British Asian because... Um, because of my upbringing and the fact that my parents are very much Indian, they came here in their 30s to the UK. But um, so what, what that has meant for me is certain aspects of my life are very Indian and certain aspects of my life are very British. For example, my taste in food is very Indian. But in terms of politics, I know nothing about Indian politics or sport. I know more about sport in the in England, in Britain, than I do. Uh, and like just certain habits are more Indian, certain habits are more British. So I would 100% like if someone asked me, I would say I'm British Asian, I wouldn't say I'm Indian or I'm just British. I would definitely, apart from legal reasons for which I'm British, but. <laughs> do you ever feel like you don't belong? I did. I used to feel that. Because uh, I felt I'm not completely Indian. It used to happen when I used to go to India on, on visiting family that I'm not completely Indian. Uh, and then certain times here, like I know very little about British music. Um, and that's the only thing that's coming to mind, but certain things would happen. So, you know, my friends would do certain things and I was just like, I would never do that. Uh, so I used to feel like I didn't belong to either. I felt like I was in a weird middle zone, but then it kind of dawned on me later that that's fine. There's no rule which says I have to be one or the other. I think that's what, because there's so many categories I would fit in in life. You know, I'm from sale. Uh, my parents are Indian. Uh, I have a particular faith. I've studied here, da, 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 da. They're not mutually exclusive. I can have parents from India. I can live in Manchester. I can go to the University of Manchester. I can do all those things and still be one person. So later I got more comfortable with that idea. Before I thought I have to be one or the other. I can't be British, Asian. You know, I have to be British or Asian, but later on I was like, so I don't feel lost anymore, but I, I used to, yeah. And what does back home mean to you? Um, to me, back home actually means England. There is no, because I haven't lived anywhere else. Uh, again, when people say back home, I know what they're referring to. So they mean, where's your family from? Or originally, where are you from? But genuinely to me, back home is England because that is that is my home. Yeah. Um, what does British Asian mean to you? So to me personally, it means uh, being very privileged to be able to experience two different cultures and really take the best of both. You know, because I can, I can pick and choose and be like, you know, I'd rather not be late because that's like a very Asian thing. You know, I'd rather be on time. Uh, and, but like, yeah, on a, on a serious note, just pick what I like about both the cultures and 
and be blessed that I can always have not two different lives but in a way, two different lives where if I'm at a certain party, we can behave in a certain way and just have fun in that way and then not get bored of one because I always have another. So, um, yeah, that's what, that's what it means.